Uh, Jonathan Ginobili. Deputy yeah. Speaker, um, when I look at this animal sentience bill, as with any bill, I try and firstly work out what is the purpose of this bill and who or what is it trying to assist. I have to say that an answer to both questions is still far from being understood by me. Actually, the more I look at this bill, listen to experts and read its proceedings in the other place, the more I'm confused about what we're trying to do here. Whilst everyone knows what animal welfare is and values what it is intended to do, nothing in this bill and no one can either define animal sentience nor can they say how it is measured. As a result, this bill becomes some kind of forerunner for what science may but does not yet tell us. It is effectively a statement of direction, but without quite knowing where to start or where this, this will finish. The bill does not define animal sentience, so ministers will have no gauge to work against. Following that, we as legislators are effectively being asked to vote blind on this. The new committee will accordingly have to make things up as they go along, at the same time as the various lobbyists will be pushing the committee towards reviewing everything that they see as important to their various causes. And then, if the committee were not to produce many or enough reports, they will be attacked for inaction. However, if they produce too many reports, they will be attacked for exercising power without democratic oversight or care for costs or whatever. And then, if the government fail to act on the views of this committee, they will be attacked for inaction or possibly judicially reviewed. Or, if the government do act on the reports, people could claim that such proposals should come up through the democratically elected processes rather than this unanswerable committee. Or they could say that the government are using this committee as a stalking horse in order to avoid taking the blame for proposals that they might think look a bit unpopular. In effect, whichever way one looks at these proposals, they are fraught with problems from every side. And one has to wonder, Madam Deputy Speaker, why we are doing this. What is there to gain out of this bill, other than some sort of short-term soft publicity, that this bill is somehow about being nice to animals? And of course, as was raised in the other place, in reality, this isn't just about PR, because there are minority areas of activity in our national life that are realising that this bill could easily be used against them. So yes, I did see the government's assurances given in the other place that this bill would not attack the Jewish and Muslim religious animal slaughter practices of Shahita and Halal. And blatantly, yes, the bill makes no direct attack on these practices. But what it does do is open up indirect lines of attack that could easily be put to use to prejudice or damage these minority religious practices. And importantly, as my honourable friend from Cotswolds very clearly explained, the bill provides no provision to exempt religious rights, cultural traditions and regional heritage as was included in the equivalent EU legislation. This, I believe, should be corrected, and I'll be with him on that. If this new committee were, for instance, to come up with regular reports against non-stunning slaughter practices, the pressure for change will quickly switch on to ministers. I personally would defend these religious practices, although this is not the debate of today. However, what is relevant is to argue that any such changes should be formulated and debated by ministers and then parliament, not this new committee. And if science does eventually tell us what sentience means, and how it can be measured, or where animal welfare needs to be improved as a result, then why farm this out to a committee rather than deal with it directly? A committee which will be appointed by ministers of the day. And let us acknowledge that ministers who we politically support today will not be there on a change of government. And for that matter, even if there is to be a committee, why does it need to be set up by a statute if it has no executive powers? I was very surprised at the unwillingness of ministers to engage on this issue or accept amendments in the other place, despite this being a hugely contentious bill there, and I hope this attitude will now change. 
There seems to be a lack of focus on what this committee will be doing and possible knock-on implications. Seemingly, it will have a full roving remit across Whitehall, although how it will interact with other departments seems pretty vague. How it will interact with the existing animal welfare machinery and specifically the Animal Welfare Committee, we don't know. Why could this new committee, for instance, not just be part of the Animal Welfare Committee? As chairman of the British Shooting Sports Council and as a member with a rural, uh, as a member with a rural constituency, I have been approached by many to voice their concerns at this bill being used as a screen to attack farming practices and wildlife management processes, as well as field sports. In the last few years, for instance, the anti-game shooting lobby have become increasingly litigious and now regularly use judicial review to query a wide range of shooting issues, such as where game shooting can take place and what can be, and what can be shot using general licences and so on. That these people will not attempt to judicially review decisions taken by ministers on the back of this new committee's findings is frankly unrealistic. Accordingly, I can only predict that this legislation will complicate many rural activities, it will add complexity and require legal opinions and court appearances, and will add cost and it will add bureaucracy. Despite it being welcomed by the opposition, it is, to my mind, a poor piece of legislation. Yeah, yeah, yeah.